The math is easy, but it's real. By the end of this video, you will be able to do part of a serious encryption algorithm with your kids. What problem are we trying to solve? It should be easy for me to send you a message. It should be easy for you to read the message. And no one else can read the message. Without encryption, other people can listen in. Here's the important part. Just because you know how to encrypt a credit card number, that doesn't mean you know how to decrypt a credit card number. Allow me to present a simple example that will show you how encryption works. Alice and Bob don't trust each other, and they can only communicate over email. How can Alice and Bob flip a coin virtually? This example will demonstrate one of the tricks of modern cryptography. If you could break this example, you could see every credit card transaction on the web. So, how do we do it? How do we flip a coin using only email? To start, Alice will secretly pick two random numbers. In a moment, I'll show you how to interpret those numbers as a coin flip. Next, Alice multiplies the numbers together and emails the results to Bob. Bob replies to Alice with his guess. Finally, Alice reveals her secret numbers to Bob. Let me fill in one small detail. How do you translate the two secret numbers into a coin flip? It's easy. The hardest thing you need to do is divide by four and take the remainder. Next, decide which of the three rules applies to your numbers. In this example, the virtual coin landed on heads. Why prime numbers? That's the only way to make sure Alice doesn't cheat. If the secret numbers aren't prime, there can be more than one pair of secret numbers that multiply to the same product. How else can it fail? Let's take another look at this example. Once again, Alice sends 7,387 to Bob. Only this time, Bob's not going to guess. He's going to figure out what the secret numbers are. Bob is looking for two integers that multiply together to make 7,387. So he starts from 2 and keeps trying until he gets to 83. In just a few minutes, he found the secret numbers. He should have Googled it. That would have been faster. At this point, Bob has the two secret numbers, so he can easily compute the result of the coin flip. This is the same exact algorithm we just looked at. Bob won the coin toss because Bob knows math. Okay, what if Alice makes her secret numbers twice as big? You remember this from school. If the first number is twice as big, the blue area will be twice as wide. And if the second number is twice as big, the blue area will be twice as tall. Put them together and you have to do four times as much work. But Bob has a lot more work to do if he wants to cheat. In the original example, Bob had to count to 89. With the larger numbers, Bob has to count to 5,297. And he's doing more work for each number. We're moving in the right direction, but we're not done yet. It took Wolfram Alpha approximately one second to break that number into its original pieces. Let's keep going. What if we were using 20-digit numbers and we decided to upgrade to 40-digit numbers? Once again, doubling both numbers means it'll take four times as long to multiply them. But that's still easy for a computer. My computer can multiply two 40-digit numbers so fast I can't even measure it. It shows zero for the time elapsed. On the other hand, cheating with 40 digits will be much harder than cheating with 20 digits. That number on the screen is a 1 followed by 20 zeros. The NSA couldn't break that. Let's finish our algorithm. 
We start with Alice picking two secret numbers. And they have to be large prime numbers. Remember, large numbers are harder to reverse engineer. And they have to work in our heads or tails algorithm. The game continues as before. Then, there's one extra step at the end. Bob verifies that the two secret numbers are both prime. In our example, Bob knew that Alice cheated because the numbers in red are not prime. And that's it. That's the entire algorithm on the screen. Let's bring this home. Why do encryption algorithms use large prime numbers? Multiplying two large prime numbers is easy. That's required to flip the coin or to encrypt the email. But reversing that operation is hard. So you can't cheat at the coin flip game and you can't break good encryption. Why do encryption algorithms use large prime numbers? So we can build things that can't be reverse engineered. We only discuss one facet of encryption, but it's an important one. I've always loved this example. I wish I could remember who showed it to me.